Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 12 from unit cubes to the formulas for volume. Classwork example one. There's three diagrams here, like three pictures of rectangular prisms. It says A, write a numerical expression for the volume of each of the rectangular prisms above. Okay, keyword here, expression. An expression is not an equation. The equation for the volume of a prism is volume equals the base area times the height. And the base, the formula for the base area is length times width. So really volume is length times width times height. Now, now let's focus on this word right here, expression. This is an equation. It has an equal sign. An expression is the portion on one side of the equal sign that represents that volume in this case. So the expression is just length times width times height, not equal to anything. So if I wrote a numerical expression for this, it would be 15 inches times one and a half inches times three inches. There is my numerical expression for the volume of this prism here. Number two, the expression is 15 inches times one and one half inches times six inches. That is the expression. In this one, number three, 15 length inches, width one and one half inches, height nine inches. That is numerical expression for the volumes of the three prisms. The next question says, what do all the expressions have in common? Well, length, length, length is all the same. All three prisms have a length of 15 inches. One and a half, one and a half, one and a half inches wide. So all of these expressions, all of these prisms have the same width. So if they have the same length and they have the same width, then they have the same base area. The only difference is their height, three, six, nine. What do they represent? These expressions represent the volume of the prisms. Okay. Rewrite the numerical expressions to show what they have in common. Well, if I just multiply these two, which I've already explained to you up here, okay, they have a B in common, and 15 times one and a half, 15 times one is 15, half of 15 is seven and a half, so that'd be 22 and a half inches times three inches. Actually, that'd be 22 and a half inches squared. This one would be 22 and 0.5 inches squared times 6 inches. And this one would be 22 and 1 half inches squared times 9 inches. Okay. So actually what I should have done is move, this is the answer to C. I did not say, or I didn't write B, I just said it. They all have a length and a width in common. That represents the base area. Part D, if we know the volume of, for a rectangular prism as length times width times height, what's another formula for the volume we could use based on these examples? Okay, so we could use base area, or the area of the base, times the height. 
okay? And I've been doing this all along, showing you that volume is base area times height, and base area is length times width, so you plug it in, and voila. E says, what is the area of the base for all of the rectangular prisms? And the area for the base was all 22 and one half inches squared. F, determine the volume of each rectangular prism using either method. So now I'm just going to say V equals capital V times H, and therefore V, let's do the first prism, V1 equals 22.5 inches squared times 3 inches I. Let me just make sure. I think about 369. Okay. So there is the setup for the first one. The second one, the volume of the second prism equals capital B times H, and that is 22.5 inches squared times 6 inches. And then finally, the volume of the third prism is also base times height, base area. And the volume of the third, therefore, is 22.5 inches squared times 6 inches. All right. Now calculate this. We get the volume of 1 to be 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. 3 times 2 is 6. That is 67.5 inches cubed. Remember, inches squared times inches to the first is inches cubed. Volume for the second. 6 times 5 is 30. Carry the 3. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 3 is 15. Carry the 1. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. So that is 135 inches cubed. 135.0. Let me rewrite that. It's a little messy. And volume 3 is 6 times 5. Oh, that's not a 6. It's a 9. Booyah, I caught a mistake. 9 inches squared. Or 9 inches, not squared. So when I multiply these, I get 9 times 5 is 45. Carry the 4. My decimal goes there. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 4 is 22. Carry the 2. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 2 is 20. So I get 202.5 inches cubed. G says, how the volume to the first and second rectangular prism compared? Um, the second prism. Volume is twice the volume of prism. Okay, 67.5 times 2 is 135. Since the height doubled, the volume doubled. Example two, the base of a rectangular prism has an area of three and a quarter inches squared. The height of the prism is two and a half inches. Determine the volume of the rectangular prism. Okay. Okay, so I'm a big fan of drawing a picture of a diagram, so I found this diagram to explain what we're talking about here. And it says the base of a rectangular prism has an area of three and one quarter inches. That means the area of this bottom, the area equals three and one quarter inches squared. And remember what I said, the base area is capital B equals length times width. So when I multiply the length and the width, I got a total of three and one quarter inches squared. The height of the prism is, and I'll write that in red here, the height is right here, and that is two and one half inches. Determine the volume of the rectangular prism. 
So as I've always said before, write the formula, volume equals base area times the height, volume equals step two, substitute in the givens and solve. The volume equals the base area, which is this right here, it said area equals, but it's actually base area or capital B. And that base area is three and a quarter inches. I'm gonna make it improper. Four times three is 12 plus one is 13 over four inches is squared. That is my B times the height, which is two and a half inches, or four plus one is five halves inches. So the volume is five times 13, five times three is 15, carry the one, five times one is five, plus one is six, over four times two, which is eight inches squared. So let's mix this like improper. Eight times eight is 64 with a remainder of one. So it's eight and one eighth inches cubed. Cubed. The volume is eight and one eighth inches cubed. Okay, under the extension, a company is creating a rectangular prism that must have a volume of six feet cubic feet. The company also knows that the area of the base must be two and a half feet squared. How can you use what you learned today about the volume to determine the height of the rectangular prism? Okay, well, I know that volume equals the base area times the height and the base area equals the length times the width of the bottom of the base. So a company is creating a rectangular prism that must have a volume of six feet cubed. So that is my V, six feet cubed equals my base area times my height. That's what I was given right in that first sentence right here. The company also knows that the area of the base must be two and a half feet squared. So now I know that my base two and one half feet squared is how I got my length times my width gave me that. Okay. It says, how can you use what you learned today about the volume to determine the height? So we know the volume. We know the base, capital B. We know our capital B is right here. So I'll replace it over here and I get six feet cubed equals two and a half feet squared or five and a half feet squared times the height. So now all I have to do is divide five halves feet squared by both sides, divide both sides by five halves feet squared, I should say. And that will leave me with H because this is multiplication. And in order to get rid of something across an equal sign, you do the inverse and the inverse of multiplications division. So I'm going to divide by five halves feet squared. But Houston, we have a problem. We cannot divide a fraction by a fraction in math. We cannot divide by a fraction, but we do have a rule that will allow us to, um, I don't want an equal sign up, how about an arrow? We want to multiply by the reciprocal of this. It's the same as dividing by it. So. I'm going to take that six feet cubed and instead of dividing it by five halves over here like this, okay, five halves feet squared, five halves feet squares cancels. And that leaves me with H all by its lonesome over here. But I have six feet cubed here and five halves feet squared divided by it. How about instead we just divide by the feet squared and flip that five halves and multiply by two fifths. So that's what we're really doing. We're flipping. We are flipping the fraction like this. Okay, we flip the fraction but leave the unit of measurement down below. And then six times two is 12 over five. And then the feet squared will cancel two of these, leaving me with the height of five twelfths feet. Five goes into 12 two times. Five times two is 10 with a remainder of two. So the height is two and two fifths feet. Okay. And that is the end of lesson 12. Go to your problem set. And oh, by the way, smash the like.